Okay. Got the key in the ignition, turned it to the uh, operate accessory, but not on. Plug it in, OBD2 reader. Oh, come on, cooperate. Okay, select codes, US. We're gonna see if there's any codes on here from the last time I ran it, um, because uh, the, the misfire I'm looking at here and investigating has happened since I cleared the codes. Truck, Chevrolet. Silverado, 2500 HD four-wheel drive, 6.0 OBD. Okay, first one that we're going to be looking at here is this one, the P0300, random multiple misfire, confirmed. Second one is this one, P0332, knock sensor 2, circuit low input, bank 2. Okay, so this one's suggesting that the uh, knock sensor circuit is low, maybe? And then there's pending ones. Okay, so anyways, that's what I got here. Pull that out. I'm not starting the truck yet. <clears throat> got to do something else first. It's so windy today. At least it's warm. Okay. All right, so this is bank two on this side. So here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> in all likelihood, either... Uh, I, I'm, I, I don't even actually know exactly where the knock sensor is located, but um, either something in this wiring harness may be an issue, and probably not, or one of these guys, which are the ignition coils, one per cylinder. You see the cables run to the spark plugs, right? So what I'm doing here, and I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna show the one for now. But what I'm doing here is I'm getting this is uh, a spark plug puller. It's a special type of pliers. The reason I got this is that you need to kind of loosen the ends a bit before you pull anything. Uh, my my guess is it's going to either be this cylinder here. Or this one. I'm really hoping it's not that one because A, it's kind of far back and B, troubles with that cylinder means like long-term issues with the truck. This thing may not even work for these, so we'll try this. And these things are a little easier. Basically, there. You got to rotate everything before you ever try and pull them. There we go. To make sure that anything that has been dried and stuck in place is loosened. And the reason for that is that if I... And I'm definitely going to have to use the pliers for those... Uh, for those plugs um if you try and pull one of those cables off of the end of either of those things you can damage the connection inside the cable so that then you have to replace the cable in case you hadn't noticed i'm outside of town this vehicle don't want to run right how am i supposed to get that also i don't have money so what i am doing is i'm going to go around here and i'm going to there we go twist and loosen these guys Without, I will still use the pliers to pull, but for loosening, you really have to, you have to rotate these a little bit. That one's bad. That might be, could even turn out to be a bad spark plug and not actually anything else. Um, because this is one of those somewhat modern, relatively speaking, I mean, it's, it's 20 years old almost, but um, the onboard computer will adjust the, the fuel and air if there are lean or rich conditions. So anyways, what I'm doing here on this bank is I am attempting to loosen these all up so I don't break it. That one's pretty shitty too. But when I go to pull those off, I'll have to use the pliers because otherwise I, I might rip something out. I really don't want to do that. So now that we got that, I'm actually going to set this down here. Maybe you can see me work while I do it or something instead before I shut this video off. Um, where's a good place? Is that a good place? Yeah, let's see what we can do here. Hopefully this doesn't fall.
<laughs> oh shit. Okay, so that's not a good place. Maybe this. Hopefully, we'll see. Fingers crossed. There we go, I think. I think I found it. Oh, that's so bad. That's pretty sticky. Oh, if I had the funds, I would just get new plugs and wires. <sighs> Alternately, if I could try and pluck those uh, wiring harnesses right here off one at a time. I may end up doing that, but that's a screwdriver job. So basically what I'm going to do is start the truck now and uh, wait for it to begin misfiring. See how long it takes. that is yeah. something coming out of the exhaust it's like 60 out that almost looks like blue I'm really hoping that's not the case because that that implies a head gasket or a cracked head. And unfortunately, I think uh, in this case, the age of the motor, if that was the case, the uh, um, replacement of a motor, like getting a, a decent lower mileage used Vortec V8 or even a Junkyard LS and having it installed, probably be cheaper than that unless I'm going to try and dig into this thing myself, and I, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't know. I might be capable of pulling that off, but I've never done it before. God, it smells terrible. The other thing is though, oh, we're about to start doing it. Here it is. Let's go sniff that smoke real quick and see what it smells like. That honestly doesn't smell like coolant. I didn't take a big whiff, but um, I don't know, I think that's uh, un that's uh, unburned gasoline being detonated or something in there. There it is. Now we're starting to misfire. You can really hear it chugging. I should start getting a flashing uh, check engine light here pretty soon. Okay, so at this point, see that? 
that cylinder's working. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna say this one is a different color than the others. This might be the culprit. Oh, come on. You see that? No change. Watch. No change. That is the culprit right there. So what that means is that this device here is malfunctioning. I'm gonna have to replace that. Uh, hopefully, because I'm gonna be using some borrowed money from a friend anyway, that I can also get uh, plugs and wires to tune it up a little bit. I'll be real honest. Man, that was easy. The truth is, I had to do this exact same thing on my estranged wife's uh, similar Chevy pickup with a similar model but smaller displacement engine. And I believe it was the same cylinder. This is very typical of this, this thing. There are very few things that go seriously wrong with a Chevy motor, I gotta, I gotta say. So, that's the culprit right there. That's the problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this piece and also do the uh, oil change and plugs and wires. And I mean, it's springtime. It's a good time to do that anyway. But, uh, so, you can see... Some of these guys are corroded and, and whatever, like there's been heat issues or something, but this, this one right here, like I said, you can see that the plug's a different color. I'm hoping that uh, we don't have wire splice issues or anything, but uh, you can see them two little, gosh, what are those, like nine millimeter? Gotta pull the cables off, gotta unbolt that, and unplug that and that's literally all there is to it and then replace it in reverse order so now we know and uh yeah once you get past the learning curve and the intimidation part most repairs on vehicles are fairly simple and not near as bad as you think so when i get this done i'll let you know